Welcome to Catalytic Leadership, the podcast designed to help leaders intentionally grow and thrive. Here is your host, author and leadership and executive coach, Dr. William Attaway. Hey, it's William, and welcome to today's episode of the Catalytic Leadership Podcast. Each week, we tackle a topic related to the field of leadership. My goal is to ensure that you have actionable steps you can take from each episode to grow in your own leadership. Growth doesn't just happen. My goal is to help you become intentional about it. Each week, we spotlight leaders from a variety of fields, organizations, and locations. And my goal is for you to see that leaders can be catalytic no matter where they are or what they lead. I draw inspiration from the stories and journeys of these leaders, and I hear from many of you that you do too. Let's jump in to today's interview. I'm so excited to hey, today to have Kim Derek Rosdiva on the show. Kim is an author, blogger, and branding guru who has guided some of the Fortune 500's oldest and most iconic brands. He has over three decades of strategic planning, branding, and executing multi-million dollar advertising and marketing campaigns, PR, and corporate communications in the agriculture, pharmaceutical, petroleum, airline, telecommunication, and automotive industries. He recently published his first book, Branding Queens, which is about 20 incredible women who built global brand dynasties. His goal is to share his branding knowledge today. And I know every one of us is ready to listen. Kim, thank you so much for being on the show. William, thank you very much for having me on your show. I would love for you to share some of your story with our listeners, Kim, particularly around your journey and your development as a leader. How did you get started? So I can go right back to my early days of when I was uh, playing with my sister and I always ended up sort of on a stage uh, and I would always be sort of standing there um, acting as if I was a leader of some sort. I, I I don't know why it came natural to me uh, to be always sort of me on the front. Uh, I'm trying to lead people or at least try to get people to see things differently. So mm. uh, as, as I went through my, my, my career uh, I'm an introvert. So that's even harder. I think when you actually think about it one-on-one, I'm really good, but yeah. large audiences, it took time. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, some people say, oh, no, you're not an interview. I act like an extrovert because uh, yeah. to work and to be a leader, you have to be seen, yeah. um, not necessarily heard, but you have to be seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think introverts uh, have, I think we have an advantage. We spend maybe a little bit more time listening uh, than actually telling. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm the same. I'm an introvert who operates as an extrovert in so much of my life. And I think I think sometimes there's this misnomer that introvert means that you hate people. <laughs> I don't think that's true for either of us. No. It's just where do you draw your energy? Yeah. Is your energy from crowds, from groups of people? Or do you find that you draw more energy solo doing yeah. things that really fill your tank? My My wife is an extrovert. And when we go to parties... At the end of it, I'm totally exhausted. (laughs) She's always the one saying just one more, just a couple more more minutes. Uh, And then when we get home or the next morning and we sort of, you know, um, talk about the party, I'll have maybe actually had three really good conversations, but they were deep conversations. Right. And my wife would have actually talked to everybody. (laughs) That's so funny. My experience as well. (laughs) You you talk a lot, Kim, about branding. I would love for you to talk about what a brand is and why it's important. Sure. And I I, I kind of stole the quote from Maya Angelou. And and my definition of brand isn't about what it says Mm -hmm. or what it does, but how it makes its customers feel. Mm. So, Good. Brand and branding is all about that perception, that feeling that the customer has because they own the brand. Yeah. So you you heck you can influence it absolutely, mm-hmm. 
every touch point that you have, every opportunity you have to convince or to get somebody to want to have your brand or to want to use your brand, uh, you have lots of opportunities to convince them and to mm -hmm. prove to them that your brand is worthy of their loyalty. When we were talking earlier, we were talking about what you call your five C's of branding. Yes. And I think this is fascinating. I, I would love for you to share about that as well. Branding is very complex. Uh, I think people sometimes get it mixed up with marketing. Sometimes they get it mixed up just that it's a logo yeah. or a name. Yeah. So what I tried to do with the five C's is, is give you sort of a, a, a nomenclature, but also sort of streams of principles mm. of how to build a brand. So the five C's uh, quickly is commitment, uh, construct, community, content, and consistency. Mm. Now I'm going to go back to the first one because the first one I think is really important and that's the why. It's mm. the commitment. And the yeah. commitment is everything from your vision, your mission, your purpose, your brand promise. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing this? Yeah. yeah. The second one, the construct is, is the logo. Mm -hmm. It's the color palette. It's the tonality of the brand. Is the brand funny? Is it serious? Mm -hmm. uh, what are all the constructs? I mean, smell your seven, uh, five, uh, uh, senses, uh, you know, if it's a food item, a lot of, you know, the touch, the feel, the smell is, becomes really important. Yeah. The third one, uh, which is community, is really bigger than just the customer. I mean, a lot of people say, well, why, I thought it was going to be customer. You're, you're one, one of your, your, your five C's. Customers are hugely important, but your entire community, in particular, your employees are just as important. They can be your advocates. They can actually be your your brand leaders. Uh, every time that they're, you know, with their families, with their communities themselves, and then your actual communities that you work in are mm -hmm. just as important as well. The content, this is the one that really is marketing content, but it's bigger than just marketing. It's it's public relations. It is uh, how do you present yourself as a leader. Mm. Um, to your community? Yeah. Are you are you not only just a leader, but you know, do you have a point, do you have a, an opinion on what's going on? Mm. Ideally, that opinion is is close to what you do as a as a business, yeah. but it doesn't stop you from being part of your community. Mm. And and of course, digital, social, all of those other aspects of marketing come into that. And the final one, and probably the most I, it's not the exciting one. Uh, for me, it's uh, when I actually started looking at all the things I write on my blog, this one I don't write about as often. And and I don't know why. It's it's analytical. I Probably that's part of it. But the consistency, what is your mm. governance? What what do you have in place so that the product or service that you're providing is going to be delivered consistently every time? And that's not even good enough. What you have to do is always continue to ratchet that up. So you've got to follow trends. You've got to follow your competition. Do you have all this data that's coming in? What are you doing with it? How are you analyzing and how are you making sure that you're moving forward and not just sitting back and, and sort of reaping the rewards of your brand? Because your brand is dynamic. So, so this one is really, really important. Mm. That's so good. And I love how you've created the, the 5C model, the framework here in such a way that that no matter what people are doing, where they're doing it, it doesn't matter. This applies. And these are handles that they can grab and 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 really take and do something with those. It, it's so practical. I mean, looking around at, at so many of the organizations that you've worked with, I mean, of those 5Cs, which one do you think is the one that that so many company, so many companies really poorly execute. To me, it would be the commitment. Hmm. And and why I say the commitment is sometimes it's just words. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. a mission statement. It's true. But have you actually built it into the all the other C's? That's good. 
That's so, good. you know, cause you know, it's just, okay. I, I can, I can answer the why in the elevator. So I'm yeah. good, but is it actually used all the time when you're actually making business decisions? Mm. When you're looking at product development, are you going back to this and going, does this fit? Does this actually fit? Or are you doing this because there's an opportunity and there's money on the table that you don't want to want to lose? Yeah, that's really good. It, it reminds me of something I heard once. Is it is it just what's on the wall or is it what's going on down the hall? Yeah, that's a great one. You know, is is this is this really who you are? I, I love that. So, so a lot of the folks listening to this show are entrepreneurs. They're they're agency owners. They're leaders. They're starting something new and fresh. For for something new for a new company, a new organization, which C do you think is the most important? I'm going to go back to to the commitment. Same one. If, yeah. If you don't have that, figure yeah. it out. And and what's really interesting though is if you're really new as a business. That may not be that clear because mm. you're you're focused on a product. Yeah. At the beginning of your journey, it is about the quality. It's about how am I going to make this? How am I going to make it in a way that's going to be cost effective? Yeah. Or how am I going to deliver it? Uh, you know, what's the channels for delivery for this product? You know, it, out, of, out of mind, out of sight, uh, you know, you're not going to have a product or a successful product. So you are really focused on what you're trying to accomplish. And that's mm. deliver a product or service that is exceptional. So the why may not be so clear, mm. but the consistency is the other piece to the puzzle of getting that right. Because if it, it's not delivered consistently, you know, it's like uh, a personality, you know, it's a schizophrenic personality going, okay, well, this time, last time I came in, this is what I experienced. Yeah. That's not the same experience I got this time. Mm. It's kind of like, you know, mm. airlines, you know, they're, <laughs> you know, you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> oh, boy, isn't that true? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's true. I, I, a friend of mine, Jonathan Milligan, often says consistency is the mother of momentum. Yeah. Everybody wants momentum. Every business, every organization wants momentum. But how you get there is the day to day. It's the consistency. Yeah. It's the blocking yeah. and tackling consistently yeah. Yeah. over and over and over, working the system, calling the plays. And so, and that's hard sometimes yeah. because entrepreneurs and leaders, oh, look at that. Hey, let's try that. Why don't we do this? Let's try that. Oprah Winfrey, uh, who's in in the uh, one of the branding queens in my book, always denied that she was a brand hmm. until she learned that what one aspect of a brand was being consistent. Mm. And when she understood that, mm. she understood that she was a brand because she was consistent. She has always been consistent in what she delivers. Oh, that's good. Let's let's talk about the book because I, I think I think you you've written something that is incredibly insightful and helpful, uh, and and can be for so many of our listeners. You wrote this about a twenty entrepreneurial women who built iconic brands, Oprah being one of them. Uh, who are who are some others that are included in the twenty and and the brands that you're looking at? Most of these brands are consumer brands. I mean, mm -hmm. I had to sort of stick with consumer brands partly because I wanted to people to have a relationship, but they've already had a relationship with these brands so that they could understand where they were coming from, as opposed to, you know, a manufacturer. There's a couple here that may not be familiar to, mm. to most people, but it goes back to 1810. Mm. Uh, the first brand uh, that I have here, which is uh, uh, Veuve Clicquot, the, the champagne. Mm. Barbara Nicole uh, Clicquot, uh, started, uh, actually, she married this fellow who was uh, a person that worked in uh, textiles, family, well-to-do family uh, in, in France. Hmm. And they got into her, actually, her father-in-law had some uh, vines that they were growing, and they were just growing grapes and selling the grapes to, to other vineyards. Uh, and her husband and her got really enchanted by this whole idea of, 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 uh, of growing your own, um, hmm. uh, grapes and producing your own, 
uh, product. So they started dabbling and then he suddenly died, uh, uh, yellow fever. Mm -hmm. In most cases back then, what uh, the woman would do is sell the business, give it um, another family member. She had a daughter at the time, a young, a young uh, daughter, but she was passionate about this as much as her husband. So she's convinced uh, because she was a widow, she convinced her, her father-in-law to allow her to continue the business. And wow. the rest is history. Wow. Uh, but that's the oldest brand. Uh, the others um, that you would probably be familiar with is uh, Bissell uh, Carpet. Uh, mm -hmm. cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, so that was Anne Bissell um, back in 1876. Uh, Margaret uh, Rudkins, I don't know if you'd know Margaret Rudkins, but if I mentioned Pepperidge Farms, oh yeah, uh, she started Pepperidge Farms. She was not a baker. She actually was a wife of a stockbroker, um, got caught into the um, depression, mm. uh, and she had a son who had allergies and her doctor had said to her, well, you know, all these it was starting to come out with all these new, you know, wonder bread, all, you know, purified things, lots of packaged products. And he said, you know, if you got your own whole wheat uh, grain and, and made your own bread, you'd probably be good for him. So that's what she did. She learned mm -hmm. how to make bread mm -hmm. and people started loving her bread, neighbors, friends, uh, and even her doctor, because she, you know, presented to her doctor, and she started a business. Wow, selling bread, and from then again, history um, tells you the rest. Olive and Beach, Beach Aircraft. Oh wow, uh, one that you would never um, think of, but uh, Beach Aircrafts—they still fly today. Yeah. Uh, the company has been bought uh, a number of times, but there are still uh, planes being made. Um, beach uh, aircraft, her and her husband. He was a pilot. She was not. She was really good at numbers. She uh, probably, you know, she actually never did have a degree in, in um, accounting or anything, but she knew numbers. She could do equations in her head. Um, most of us couldn't do on paper. Uh, <laughs> so she actually took over the business when her husband passed away. And again, this was a situation. She had two daughters. Uh, she didn't have to. She was quite well off, um, but she took the business and made it actually international. My so, goodness. I mean, I can keep going. I can keep going. I'll give you a, to sort of maybe more recent uh, uh, brands. Uh, Sarah Blakely uh, oh. Span uh, Spanx, uh, yeah. which I think is a one that uh, is quite famous today. Mm -hmm. uh, other ones that have been in the, the media recently is Martha Stewart, yeah. uh, another really interesting uh, uh, character. Uh, Debbie uh, Fields, uh, she started Fields Cookies. Oh, uh, Really interesting lady. Uh, she, one of the interesting things from her, her perspective was uh, when she started her business, Franchising was really popular. Uh, it was an easy way to to get uh, finance and an easy way to to expand quickly. And in hmm. something like this, you know, expanding quickly because it was a it was a new concept. It's kind of like mm -hmm. you know the the coffee shop. Uh, yeah. You know, you had to get one on every corner um, to 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 build one your brand awareness, but two just to to solidify and make you know the barrier a little harder for somebody else to come in, particularly yeah. in that low end uh, entry. Uh, you know, you don't have to have a whole manufacturing uh, plant right away. And she started, and she did not want to franchise. Hmm. Every location was company owned, and oh, the wow. reason she wanted it company owned is so she could control the quality of the product. Mm. and the delivery of that product. Mm. She wow. wanted it to be an experience, a fun experience. Interesting. So the other thing she did is that the cookies were actually made on premise, not from the dough that was you know pre-made, frozen. A lot of places what you see today is exactly what, what you get. It's cooked there. It's baked there. But the product is is mixed. And, and again, for consistency, mm -hmm. that's why most brands do that. Yeah. She wanted ownership by her managers. 
Hmm. that they felt proud that they were presenting you a product that they made from scratch. Wow. That's smart. So it was hmm. a different approach. Hmm. It was not an easy approach sure. because they had to put all the money up yeah. for every, every store. So it was harder. They worked. Uh, I mean, we'll have to read the book, but uh, yeah. it wasn't easy to get started uh, with her vision. So those are just a couple fascinating it certainly whets my appetite i would like to dive into this and read about each one of these because i don't know some of those names that's fantastic well one thing that you had mentioned um when we previously talked was all of this has to do with leadership yeah uh and you know the five c's i was actually thinking about i'm going these are actually applicable for leadership as well mm, so true uh, so, so, you know, it, it worked really well for me from a branding perspective, but it actually, when you start looking and I was looking at these women and going, okay, what, what are unique about them from a leadership perspective? And, yeah. and the five C's are all part of that. What are there threads that you see through that in these women? Yeah. Like, are, as you look at their leadership styles, are there, are there consistent themes that come out to you? There are, uh, the first one is believe in yourself mm. uh, as, as a leader. Yeah. You don't have a lot of people you can talk to about what you're thinking. Mm. It's true. I mean, you can't go to your, your employees and go, you know, I, I'm thinking of doing this to our company. You know, I, I'm thinking of, you know, maybe <laughs> restruct. You can't do that. So, yeah. so you, and most people when you're starting think you're crazy. Yeah. You know, and, you know, immediate reaction and most of these women people go you can't do that no that's not going to work mm -hmm. uh so believing in yourself becomes really important uh tori birch um another another uh again her brand is 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 her uh when she first started she started with the concept of having her brand on all the pieces so most designers most that they start with, they start with one product, mm -hmm. clothes maybe. When she started, she started with clothes, shoes, accessories, jewelry, Whoa. all under the Tory Birch brand. These were all designs, all related, all fit together. Huh. People said to her, you can't do that. That's, that's too big. It's gonna be too hard. And she did. And she opened up her store, her first store, first day, sold out of everything. <laughs> wow. So so that's the first one. <clears throat> Self-aware, I think, is another hugely important one. Self-aware, yeah. but also eager to learn. Mm. All good. of these women started from ground zero. Mm. Most did not have a formal education, a uh, university degree, or or any discipline that they that they could fall back on. So they had to learn. They had to learn about manufacturing, they had to learn about customer relations the neat thing is they understood their customer hmm. so as a leader you do yeah. need to understand your target audience as well be it to be an employee be it yeah. somebody that you're serving it becomes really important as to understand it which takes me to the next one which is empathy hmm. Hmm. i saw this across the board um their social consciousness of 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 their community was huge hmm. so some of them actually started you know you you hear about you know you know socially responsible um, brands today this was natural for most of them wow uh you know uh, i'll i'll start with i'll just give a quick example of is uh madam cj walker she was the first black millionaire in mm -hmm. the united states yeah and she started with with hair products but she started with the whole idea of helping empower other black women. So she employed a whole network of, of uh, black women that she brought in. She had, she actually built a, a uh, university and the university was not just on how to sell their products. It was all about, you know, how to build your, your confidence, how to dress, mm -hmm. how to present yourself. So good. Uh, so she brought, you know, empowered a number of, of black women uh, 
and and that's i mean go back in time that's 1906 hmm. so uh wow she was she was uh she was uh her parents were slaves uh when she uh started and she actually started as a washwoman uh wow. washing clothes for others that's how she started my goodness but the the other um as i said social consciousness uh standing for something again mm. that probably came mm. out uh as okay. well uh you know you, you have to care about something mm. and and give as i go back to the social uh consciousness of of just giving mm -hmm. was really important and mm. understanding your why of what you're trying to achieve as a leader i think is really important as well consistency principles and the other one i saw was persistence mm. and persistence yeah. because if you if no one believes what you're doing is going to succeed mm -hmm. uh you have to be consistent i'll give you one quick story uh it was uh estee lauder and when she started she had you know built a couple of products um face creams uh lipstick and she tried to you know she went to Saks fifth avenue the main floor is all your cosmetics and she went to the cosmetic um uh, uh head and said i'd like to you know open up uh you know into your store and you know offer my products and she goes well you know you'll if our customers ask for it then we'll we'll consider possibly bringing your products in but right now hmm. nobody's asking for your products hmm. just happened the next week or a couple of weeks uh, maybe not exactly the next week but um she was across the street at a function a luncheon and she was doing a speaking uh, engagement and she was you know talking about her her brand and what she's going and at the end of it she offered every woman in the audience a free uh, sample of her lipstick and she said you'll have to go to Saks Fifth Avenue and ask for it <laughs> oh that's brilliant <laughs> I love that yeah never give up right no never give never up. give up and you're not going to let what you can't do stop you from doing what you can. I see that too in so many entrepreneurs that are successful. They yep. will not, they will not stop when they hit an obstacle. Yep. They just figure out a way around it, over it or under it. So I'll add one more. The one I want to add is intuition. Mm. You know, and I heard this a number of times uh, in, in reading about um, these women and, and, Oprah Winfrey talks of it, you know, quite often about listening to yourself and mm -hmm. and making sure that you know you will have the answer somewhere. But uh, Lillian Vernon, uh, who started the the uh, Lillian uh, Vernon uh, direct marketing, mm -hmm. uh, and she started with uh, her. She used to have uh, there were little booklets that she mailed out, which had all these different products that were uh, the uniqueness for her products was that they would be uh auto, they would be your name would be on them so mm. so everything mm. that you would get would have yeah. that special uh nuance of having that person's name on it so there were a lot of gift items that she had but she always said her success came from what she called her golden gut uh mm. she when she was buying all of these things and she was the one that was buying all of these different items that she felt other people would want uh was exactly that she used her gut hmm. uh instincts uh to determine what would work and what would not work and she was quite successful at it the leader's intuition you we were talking earlier about personal branding and and creating yourself as a brand and you have you have a strong opinion on this <laughs> Well, I do. Uh, I'm not sure people want to be a brand if they really, truly want to be a brand. I can see people using some of the five C's using, you know, understand your why I think is extremely important. Mm -hmm. If you are, you know, uh, 
selling a service, uh, you are a consultant of some sort, you do need to understand what your why is, mm. uh, yeah. understand what your purpose is, what your promise is going to be to your customers. Yes. But defining yourself as a box of cereal, I don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, because brand is exactly that yeah it's it's fix you you fix it you write down all the characteristics of your construct and that's what you live by mm. and i find humans to be a little bit more complex than that yeah uh so there have been i mean oprah winfrey is a brand yeah queen elizabeth ii was a brand yeah i'm not true. sure queen elizabeth ii well she had probably really nice personal life uh maybe yeah but every time we saw her we saw her in a way mm -hmm. that what they wanted her to be presented absolutely that brand absolutely and we do see some brands out there that get into trouble mm -hmm. you know big brands and what we find to see is okay when you're famous are you a brand well yeah but it depends because you can mm -hmm. be famous and not really be a brand and it's safe to be you know, somewhat not committal mm -hmm. to being a brand because then you're stuck because you now become that box of cereal. Wow. That's so true. Thinking about, you mentioned Martha Stewart earlier. Yeah. You know, Martha Stewart was, was, was a brand, I think, you know, and, and she you is. hear that name, it's synonymous. It's still, she's so synonymous, but her personal issues, right. Uh, taxation and, and whatnot really created a giant speed bump in that brand like when you when you look at somebody like martha stewart like what do, what do you think in terms of of that like when you allow something from for, that's not part of the carefully crafted carefully engineered uh picture that you want to present what what is that what are the implications of that well it was in the millions uh for her brand yeah. so you know the the selling of insider trading uh, uh, scandal that she was uh, involved in, the money that she was involved that she saved by selling her shares before um, negative information that had entered into the marketplace, which dropped the shares, mm. was less than a hundred thousand. I think it was. I'm trying to remember. Uh, it was less than a hundred thousand. Wow. It wasn't. You know, in her, in the big scheme of things, it was not yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. But with her always fighting the case, and I think she believed that she was, people were going to follow her. Mm. That she, when she said she was innocent, I believe she thought people would believe her. The, the judge would believe her. Everybody would just fall into line and things would be fine. Mm. But it got worse. Yeah. And she kept fighting and she kept fighting. And so a, a woman who is very good at public relations yeah. read this one wrong. Yeah. And it was millions and millions of dollars lost in her on her shares. Mm. The company itself uh, almost went under. It took a long time for it to recover. But she recovered mm. as a brand. Uh, was she used as an example? Absolutely. I think the 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 actual crime was was petty, uh, possibly because maybe she was a woman. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But they took, they thought, okay, this is a really really uh, well known person, and we're going to set an example. Wow. And there's been lots of people, famous people that have never been taken an example of lots of different things. So she read the situ situation wrong mm. and the consequences, she she had to bear the consequences and the company had to bear the consequences as well. I think that's such a, such a lesson. And, and I, I constantly read biographies and, and so many historical works that, that teach me lessons from people who've gone before. I don't think I'm going to live long enough to make all the mistakes myself, Kim. I, I'd like to learn how to avoid as many ditches as I can. Yeah. And so sometimes from a, from a great leader, I can learn what to do, but sometimes I can learn what not to do. And that can be incredibly valuable as well. Yeah. So I think it's, I think it's so important to look at 
someone like Martha Stewart and say, okay, you know, what, what can we learn from what she did right? What can we learn from what she did wrong? Yeah. And I think so many entrepreneurs really need to take both of those to heart. I love yeah. that you, that you've captured that here. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. And she's an incredible woman in the sense of how she's reinvented herself over yes. and over and over. Yeah. I mean, I she, st she started as a babysitter. Uh, she went from being a babysitter to a stockbroker. Wow. I uh, went from a stockbroker to a caterer, went from a caterer to a book publisher of cookbooks. And uh, then she went to on to being a TV personality with her TV shows, which had cooking and lifestyle and doing all these incredible mm -hmm. things uh, to make your house look fabulous. Uh, and then she continued to reinvent herself. Yeah. I think she's got over almost close to a hundred books, uh, in her name. My goodness. Well, and, and again, there's that persistence, right? That never give up mindset. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Is there a book that you think of when you think of your journey, a book that has made a big impact on you that you would say, Hey, if, if you're a leader, I think this is one you really need to read. So uh, Davey, David Ogilvy on advertising mm -hmm. is, is a classic. Nice. Uh, I used to work for Ogilvy. So he was actually, I'm kind of dating myself now. Uh, he actually was still the um, head of our company when I worked uh, for Ogilvy wow. and Mather uh, way back when. Um, so it was the book itself uh, was not only unique because it's, I mean, well-written, hmm. really simple, uh, but we would actually get memos from him uh, and, you know, with clear thinking of, you know, how do you, how important is the, is the customer and, and the customer, I mean, today we hear customer centricity all the time, sure. uh, but from his perspective, if we had a customer, we use their product, hmm. Hmm. everybody within the organization Good. should be using their product. Mm. So oh that, that was, that's one. Um, others uh, start with why. Oh yeah. Such a great book. As people, as we, as we wrap up today, I, I'm, I'm curious if people walk away with one thing from this episode, Kim, what, what would you like that one thing to be? So I'm going to go back to my, my definition of a brand, because if you, if the original, uh, Maya Angelou's original, was about what a person does, mm -hmm. and mine is about a brand, but they're, they, they're the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's not what we say or do, yeah. but it's how we make people feel. And as a leader, the same thing. Mm -hmm. How do we make them feel? So good. They'll always remember that. I know our listeners are going to want to stay connected with you, Kim. What is the best way for them to do that? Uh, LinkedIn. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn. Uh, you'll see me there as Derek Kim Rosdiba uh, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. But uh, then the other way, you just Google me. Or Excellent. you can Google uh, Branding Queens. Uh, you'll get to my website. The website is uh, my last name, R-O-Z-D-E-B-A dot com. Uh, I'm easy to find on the internet. <laughs> That's fantastic. And don't forget to pick up a copy of Branding Weights. I'll we'll have a link to that in the show notes. I'm looking forward to reading my copy. Kim, thank you again so Great. much for the generosity you've shared today. So much insight, so much wisdom. So grateful. Thanks for joining me for this episode today. As we wrap up, I'd love for you to do two things. First, subscribe to this podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you find value here, I'd love it if you would rate it and review it. That really does make a difference in helping other people to discover this podcast. Second, if you don't have a copy of my newest book, Catalytic Leadership, I'd love to put a copy in your hands. If you go to catalyticleadershipbook.com, you can get a copy for free. Just pay the shipping so I can get it to you and we'll get one right out. My goal is to put this into the hands of as many leaders as possible. This book captures principles that I've learned in 20 plus years of coaching leaders in the entrepreneurial space, in business, government, nonprofits, education, and the local church. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn to keep up with what I'm currently learning and thinking about. 
And if you're ready to take a next step with a coach to help you intentionally grow and thrive as a leader, I'd be honored to help you. Just go to catalyticleadership.net to book a call with me. Stay tuned for our next episode next week. Until then, as always, leaders, choose to be catalytic. Thanks for listening to Catalytic Leadership with Dr. William Attaway. Be sure to subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. Want more? Go to catalyticleadership.net. Thank you.